So men's bio represents a transition between men's hairdressing and barbering. So what we know from barbering is, you know, a traditional walk-in service uh, from years ago where people would roll in, get their hair cut and, and receive, you know, uh, adequate haircut. Uh, today we represent men's hairdressing and a very, very evolved style of service where you know people come in and have their hair cut they feel refreshed um, we serve drinks and have a comfortable waiting environment um, appointment based in fact so it's it's a a, a revolution to the industry um, in terms of um, offering service like that so this is our school that we went to Very so this is this is where i met you this is where we met each other. Yeah. And as you always say, we weren't necessarily in the same group. Group. You were in the sporty circle, I was in the naughty circle. That's right. Yeah. But um, still had that connection, I suppose, via the creativity from the haircuts mm. that we had. I think we were both doing it ourselves at the time. Yeah. I certainly was doing mine. And uh, we were in English class together. And uh, I was sitting behind you. I remember seeing that mullet you had get bigger and bigger. <laughs> and me almost competing to keep up with that mullet. We connected, well, I was aware of you through your hair, you were aware of me through the hair. Mm. And uh, I don't know if you remember, we actually arranged to go to the gym once. Uh, we were gonna go boxing, I have to say it. I have to say it because I, for me, the memory is there. And we, were, we, we used to speak in the corridor. It must, it must have been the boxing gym. No, it wasn't, it was, it was Nuffield because you were gonna go up to the boxing, boxing bag. They had one boxing bag in the top of Nuffield. We used to talk in the corridor about going to train together. A couple of times you mentioned it and then we thought, cool, let's do it tonight. So that night, went to the gym, stood outside the gym, and um, never showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of my first memories, thinking, bloody hell, got cool hair, but he's unreliable. I was never a fan of school, and I don't think you was either. Really, really don't like school. And even being here, to be honest, doesn't really fill me with uh, any positive, good memories. Yeah. For, me, for me, school, for me, my life began and became more positive when I left the school environment and I entered the work environment. As soon as I got in that work environment and I was spoken to like someone with, with a bit of decence and I was in an environment of colleagues and, and a, a, a community, although I was a junior and at the bottom of the food chain, the, 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 the respect that I was shown there compared to what I received in school, I really remember 15, 16 years old, starting full time thinking, wow, mm. I'm enjoying life now. I'm feeling good now because showing up to school for me not mm. not pleasant, especially the, the last yeah. years of school. Not for, no no good memories really whatsoever. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't want to be an advocate for don't go to school, but I just felt like I was in in prison, mate, the yeah. whole time. But more, more so to the point because whatever brain that God blessed me with this entrepreneurial, creative thinking thing was more. What could I be doing instead of doing this? Do you know what I'm saying? What could mm -hmm. I be doing that I love doing instead of doing this? I'm wasting time. And yeah. I think that was the biggest frustration that got me towards the final years of school, man. First haircuts I ever did was Alex Alcott. So my, my house is down the road and you had to walk past it to go to the games field. Mm. And I remember convinced Alex Alcott, who to be fair, was one of the people who had nice hair back in the day. Mm -hmm. did, and yeah. uh, went into my bathroom and I, and I cut his hair. Probably bashed it to shreds, to be fair. Kind of, kind of uh, maybe not ruined it, but definitely the first time I'd ever cut hair Sitting scissors and normal scissors, and kind of did that kind of mullety textured mm -hmm. haircut. But that was that was the first time I'd ever cut anyone's hair, and that was when I was 15 years old. Alex Alcott, who is still actually a, a client to, of Men's yeah. Bar, and I actually bumped into him the other day and mentioned so it. Did I actually, yeah. yeah, he meant, I mentioned it, and uh, obviously he remembered. But that was, I think he had to, to be fair. That night he went to a hairdresser and got it redone. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. But that was the first ever haircut, That's and that cool. was that was from that was from uh, the network that I had at school. Yeah. This is my parents' house, which they kindly allowed me to set up shop in. Um, a little bit before coming here, I was working in, in Sanriz, uh, which was based in the Maltings up in town, and um, ended up leaving there for a number of reasons. But one of the main reasons was, obviously, we'd connected, we'd spoken a lot about, well, actually, to be fair, it was just, I, I, was, I was working there full time. I was very engrossed with, with the industry and, a lot, putting a lot of time into this shop, bit of a prisoner in this shop. It was very, very good. It was very good to me, but very much felt like a prisoner. And then obviously we were linking up and meeting up more. 
and you had, you know, seemed to have a heap of freedom, although you were very busy cutting a lot of hair, you were able to do your own thing a little bit. Um, and you were, to be fair, you were kind of trying to talk me into um, doing my own thing as well. Mm -hmm. And subconsciously the whole time I was thinking, wow, this guy's doing, making good money and he's free because he's always able to come up and meet me when I'm just locked mm -hmm. in this shop the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, all I had were, really was a, was a lunch break and the odd 15 minute gap. So although I'm very grateful for, for that and um, definitely like our foundations, but I very much felt like a, a prisoner within that business. I think also I knew that we had kind of started discussing potential plans and you'd obviously were empowering me to go and do my own thing anyway. So although I had no real plan, I knew it was my time to, to, to stand up and leave. So I left on a Saturday morning, came back, spoke to my, my parents and uh, somehow they were able to provide me with a, a room, this room here, which became my little salon. And over the weekend, bought bits and pieces, got an old table, bought a tablecloth, made, a, made myself a setup. Got a barber chair. I can't remember my first barber chair. You might have even donated one. No, maybe not. Got a barber chair. A simple. I mean, no, I started with a stool, like a kitchen stool, kitchen stool. Very basic setup. Went to TK Maxx, brought like a, a a Black Panther from the the accessory section, which is mad. Looking back at it, and kind of themed it on this Black Panther, and had leopard print gown, a leopard print. Um, it was yeah. I mean, it sounds really tacky, but that, that was the very very start. And I started basically cutting hair from home. Did your parents have any doubts of you doing this from home? Like any like financial doubts? No, they said basically said to me, this is, you can come and work here for a period of time, mm. no longer than a couple of months. Mm. <clears throat> so I was given a couple of months. Mm. So I didn't do any mad renovations or anything, just a very simple setup. They still yeah. had their sofa. It was their yeah. TV room. So I basically yeah. like unbelievably grateful for the fact that they allowed me to, to do it. I don't think they knew where I was going to go with it. I don't think they realized how busy I would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and how long actually I was here for because it started like this and then I was in talks with other people about maybe going to work in another shop here and there and then it just came very apparent after being my own boss and doing my own thing and realizing actually how many clients that supported me that actually left the current salon that I was in and, and joined me and supported me and um, you know using Facebook at the time as well announcing that I'd left I was just overwhelmed with the support really and it just it was it was a no-brainer for me to stay here and then my parents kind of gathered that we were now at this point talking about doing something together so it was almost like you can have it till you do a shop yeah. little did they know it was i think one, one and a half years maybe just under two years probably maybe just under two years i was here um, at what point because they obviously said it two you can be here for about two months at what point did it go yeah i'm gonna need longer or how did how did it how i did think it i just kind of just, were they impressed by the volume of work you was able to do i think they realized that it? i was they realized that i was doing well yeah. and they probably realized that it'd be in my best interest to be able to go and do my own thing yeah. i think i blagged it a little bit to be yeah. fair because they had they really had had enough of it because mm. unfortunately the only way in is through the front door yeah. and to be honest i was starting on a saturday morning at six seven o'clock in the morning finishing at you know 12 hours later getting getting the belly in to be fair mm. making making lots of money and very much enjoying that and i think they saw that and i very much shared with them that i was able to make you know a great deal of money yeah. knowing that this money was going to be later on invested to, to yeah. do my own things do you remember the last time you cut my hair stanhope road was it yeah i thought it was only in your no town. no stanhope road is it really yeah. a nice picture of it to be fair yeah, yeah. very fussy you, you don't like a fade <laughs> i like to fade things you like a little I come and see you here for a haircut yeah right? yeah i did cut your hair and you know what this was also a place that when we were first building up, you actually brought models here and took me through haircuts. I don't know if you remember that. I don't know. You literally, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but you, I think it was maybe one time, you brought someone around, this is real, you brought someone around to do a skin taper for me to do it as a model. I had zero confidence in, in doing that at the time and I just watched you do it. But I thought, bloody hell, this guy's a good guy. You literally brought around one of your clients, you did, you literally brought around one of your clients did a skin taper, it was for me to do, but yeah, this was yeah. a time I come from a hair salon, clippers and skin fades were, was, was a, a rarity really. I was just getting into it really, so to, a good, to a good level I'd say. I remember being here on my BMX, so motivated from leaving the hair project. And I was like, bruv, we've got to do this. That's right. I remember that remember. as well. I, rem I remember it very well. I think we went, we was, we went up to Medgrill. So we'd had, we'd had a Medgrill. Oh, okay, we linked yeah. at Medgrill. You had just left the hair project in yeah. East London under the, whatever terms it was. You were frustrated. You had a lot going on. They, 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 they made me uh, redundant. How mad is that? Yeah, they made I'm me sure redundant. I'm sure I wonder if they're kicking themselves now. Yeah, probably, yeah. But how mad is that? But they, uh, it was more so they did, couldn't fill the, 
couldn't just, fill it. I, I don't know what it was. Man. Yeah. It's just but be. alhamdulillah, they made you redundant. Yeah. That gave you a load of smoke yeah, up I was, your ass. I was just done. I was just done. I was just sort I of remember. sort of six years into the industry, no closer towards my goal. I felt like I was going almost sidewards or yeah. backwards. I remember your frustration clearly. Yeah, I was just, I was just very sort of passionate about it. just right. That's right. No one's going to help me. Yeah. No one's going to open this door for me. No. I'm going to have to create this door for myself. That's right. I remember your energy. Yeah. We had a med grill. We had a med grill together, and we would definitely like talking more about doing our thing uh, there was no name really in mind at this point no. we were talking about doing something together because yeah. we had obviously been speaking about it um, and then we had a med grill and we walked down here obviously I live down this road you were living down this road mm. and we we were parked this up on this corner the, yeah. this was the corner I remember it very well you had a BMX yeah and um, you were frustrated and you were basically saying, now is the time. Yeah. This is the time, we've got to do it. Yeah, I think at that point I was already still very busy because I was only doing like four days a week at the hair project. So I was already very busy and I was more excited about the fact that I could now fit in another three days of work for people that, you know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't fit it in. So I think I was excited to, at the fact that I knew I was about to hit a new growth level. Just give me a shout. Yeah, yeah. Set the time and date. All right, I'll leave you guys to it. No yeah. problem. No problem. All right, see you around. Oh, you're on camera now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, brother. Yeah, yeah good. What's the, what's the connection here? This is, uh, this is where we've had a lot of business meetings, actually, to be fair, at the old Med Grill. Definitely. Yeah. Med Grill, for me, was the first office, the first place office. that we had all, all the conversations about Men's Bar. All of them. I think we might have even hosted some interviews here. This was the spot. Yeah. It holds a dear place in my heart, to be fair. I love the food at Medgrill, as do a lot of people who work at Menspire. It's obviously always been just down the road from our salon, so we've always used that yeah. as, a, as a place to, to go and chat. But before Menspire even happened, it's where we would, almost like when it first opened, it's where we would link in the evening and discuss. Even lunchtime, man, even lunchtime. I remember, lunchtime. I remember saying, bro, do you want to go and do lunch? Yeah, and yeah. It's such a nice, free and easy feeling. But yeah. Come up here and we go back and start cutting hair again. That's right. Yeah, we'd come down and link to lunch. Yeah. It, was just, it, was just, it was just a meeting, a meeting point for us. Yeah, it's just I think I think for me the pinnacle of meeting in here was like establishing the brand identity. Mm -hmm. What did we want to have in our salon? Sun beds, manicure, uh, manicure, pedicure, selling watches. Mm -hmm. You know all yeah. of this sort of stuff like selling watches. Yeah, selling watches, yeah it was a big, big, big part of it at the yeah, very beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's like we just put everything down on like notes that we wanted to try and achieve. That was the first time I sort of thought, wow, this is more than just a barber shop because like. Obviously, my background was just barbering, you know, and then I had the experience in a salon, but then you had barbering, salon, and then brand, and it was just mixing all of them together. So it was quite an impactful moment for me to understand like Sam's vision and then sort of roll, roll with what he was thinking and, and contribute towards that as well. The first shop that we had lined up that we thought, thought was gonna be the, the reality of the first men's buyer, the business plan for that was very, very different from actually how we started, but it was two floors. Academy was going to be upstairs. We can go there. Yeah, we can definitely go there. Ooh. We should definitely feature yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Academy was going to be upstairs. Salon was going to be downstairs. There's going to be two bar areas in there serving. Jamie Jones was going to come and DJ. Jamie Jones was going to be the DJ. Eats to... everything. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, no, that was just Medbrook. That was just Medbrook. <laughs> we were going to have Jamie Jones open it and do a house night. And this, this, was, a, this was before we established really what Men's Bar was. So we were going to have beauty rooms, sun bedrooms, academy, hair salon, bar, watches, the whole shebang. I'd still take it back anytime, mate. If they have yeah, fantastic available. unit, man, yeah. Imagine that. Now we could, we yeah. could smash it, really amazing I remember unit. just even having the car park, thinking Yeah, I know, that. yeah, that absolutely. just an absolute spot. It was going to be like a little reception, meet and sit and chill, and then go to the other room. Yeah. Or go upstairs. Yeah, layout not amazing, but now yeah. it would be. That would that would obviously be yeah. salon. Perfect. Yeah. And then yeah. 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 But this is. You get three. This was the first potential men's fire that we spent some time working towards. Yeah. But like we said definitely we had business plans for it, and we yeah. numerous viewings, mm. meeting landlord, agents. Um, and even looking at it now, amazing. As you can imagine, the excitement that we had, two young lads, even the car park space, amazing. Yeah. The upstairs space was going to be, the academy was going to be through that window there. There's going to be two beauty rooms, sun bedroom, bar. And, you know, as a location, it's opposite St. Albans train station. So, yeah, 
If um, it ever came on the market now, I think we'd probably still try and get it because it was certainly a very, very, very sick spot to have in St. Albans. Just didn't work out. Planning and landlords and planning didn't work yeah. out. For the grace of God, we weren't yeah. given it and we were given yeah. something much smaller. Yeah. But I'm very grateful because that small shop was where we figured out a lot of stuff. We figured out that bigger is not always better. Certainly not. Yeah. But we figured, yeah, little things like well, we, early on in our, in our days of business, when we had the other shop, we were doing good money. Mm. And then we sat with our accountant one time and he said, oh, you realize you now have to pay 20% VAT because you've earned X amount. And we were literally, our jaws hit the, hit, mm, hit the floor. Mm, mm. And that was when we were able yeah. to sort of figure out and understand, well, this business thing is not as easy as just opening yeah. and, and becoming busy. That's obviously the objective to become busy, but we, the busier we got, yeah. the bigger our tax bills, the bigger our mm. VAT bills got. And again, it was probably quite a good thing that we were able to learn these things in an environment, in a shop with not ridiculous overheads. So it was almost like our testing ground. It yeah. really was, Stanhope Road was our testing ground. It was the, uh, an opportunity to start building yeah. the brand. And then really, things really started properly when we moved across the road to Hatfield Road. But I think that first shop wasn't what we were after. Mm. But looking back, it was the perfect way to yeah, start was, a business yeah, because really perfect. entering with something like this, again, we weren't gonna invest our own money into this project. We were at the bank um, and it would have been a very, very different start. And who knows what would happen if we did go this route with the bank involved, with all the interest that we've had to pay back, with the beauty rooms that we would have had to fill, with the sunbed that we would have had to make busy to pay the bills. Plus the that. Plus the that. And tax. To be honest, it's just a, it's a headache thinking about it. Now I feel like we can step in here and, yeah. and do really well. We've, 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 we've got a decade of, of business under our, yeah. our, our belt and probably could probably navigate yeah. better. There's a lot of history here, isn't there, really? There's a lot of history here, bro. This is where everything started. Yeah. This is literally the the start of men's so fire. We was in the breakfast club and I think we were frustrated because we, we lost the uh, the unit there at Ridgemont. I remember now is because we couldn't change the use the council from the council. Anyway, we sat in there, sat in bre breakfast club, having a coffee. And like Sam said earlier, we, we saw this unit available and um, it was just Achilles, wasn't it? Had Achilles, um, Fine. Achilles, yeah, Achilles, yeah. Yeah. So we and it was based. He was based in Barnet. That's right. Yeah. Um, Rang him up immediately and said, like, what's the crack? What's is, is it still available? And it was far, far, far from what we had envisioned and imagined from the mighty meaty plan. But we kind of needed somewhere to start. We needed someone to just pull all of our clients to, and. Um, Lo and behold, that was it. We sort of went in there and we started to get really excited about it. We started to kind of believe and sort of starting to really envision that, that this, this could be it. This could be the little hub that we begin with. Um, little did we know it would take off and like 18 months later we were out of there. But uh, it was certainly the, the, the very, very beginning of uh, what was the empire really. And we just attached ourselves to this yeah. building. Although it was small, it was perfect and it was all about we had to act we had to act we've been trying to make something happen the big the big goals big dreams weren't, weren't really happening for us so it was about acting and, and starting small it was perfect to find our feet within business because entering you know entering something with large overheads and all the stress and pressure that, mm. that can come from that it was i'm glad that that was removed and we were able to have you know reasonable rent and we were able to kind of figure out the basics of business cash flow you know how much we could pay our staff um, how much we could pay ourselves. In fact, we didn't really even pay ourselves. Mm. We ended up just ended up leaving all the money into the bank. When we came to the point of, we used to, we used to leave and walk around to the mosque and, and pray. Mm. And Josh noticed the, the unit on the corner, which is now obviously the, the current men's fire, St. Albans, um, was up for, uh, it was available to, to rent. So we'd been in here not long. In fact, I remember we were in here on a busy Saturday and Josh turned to me and said, we need to get a bigger, bigger space. And we'd only been in for a couple of months. And we had, I think we had three or four of us in there working. Yeah, um, and we had the, the, the reception area, the payment area was out the back. And it was just, it just wasn't, it was too small for us. Mm. And we realized early it was too small for us. And I was slightly questioning it more so we had spent a reasonable amount of money and it was going so well here. So now I've got Josh trying to convince me of moving. And it was like, usually you do that after oh, a couple that of years. Was tough, wasn't it? Can't. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> something, something really good is happening here. Yeah. It's making money. Yeah. And the only problem is we can't get any more staff in. We were yeah. so limited yeah. and capped. We were both sort of full-time behind the chairs ourselves. So we realized that we couldn't grow it. Yeah. And it was, it was capping us. So Josh definitely had to convince me in the sense of like, 
show me a bigger picture of what we could do. Had to do the arm twist. Yeah, a little arm twist. We've, we've had to twist each other's arms a few times <laughs> over the last decade. Yeah. But he certainly had to, you know, um, you know, encourage me to make that decision. Good keys. Yeah, I do. Yes, keys to the garage. Right, almost an air cat. Yeah. Like my aesthetic was like, I've got a roof, chair, my tools, 20 pound of trim. And that was it. It was only later down the line, someone said, why haven't you got a mirror? I was like, well, not sure. People used to actually walk through to the toilet and go and check. So I'd be like, yeah, go and check. See if it's good, you can check in the mirror. And 10 times out of 10, yeah, fine, great, thanks. Yeah, and that was it. My, my like, I guess like images of a collection that I'd done all across the top, like pinned up, that was really cool. That looked really nice. And then in here, I have, now here I have the book. In here I have the book. Does this work, this moped? Not at the moment. <laughs> Not at the moment. Huh? Not at the moment. This well, is the one of the first ones. Yeah, I'll definitely right, go yeah, for a little spin around cotton mill now. Yeah. yeah. yeah is it what's, what's what's the crack of it? Uh, it just needs a new engine. Okay, fine. <laughs> Everything else is good so, so it wouldn't start. No, it won't start. No, it's a shame. I'll have to go a little one, rag on it. I think I, I went out on this one a few times. Mate, this is this is the banger. Yeah. I actually own four bikes now. Do you know? That's mental. And you know, do any of them work? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Why do you own four broken bikes? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. no, no, no. One, one always eventually works. <laughs> no, 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 no. Gilera works. Just can't find the keys. Okay, where is that? Outside the cell. Oh, the one you tucked away. Yeah. Where's the other two? One in my mum's garage. Yeah. One in my nonna's garage. Yeah. And one in Dane's garage, getting fixed. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you should sell them all and get one that works. I forget. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you should do. Yeah. But here's my book. That red book. Yeah, I remember the book. Max Evans is in this book, isn't he? There's a lot of people. Let's have a look. Let's have a look in the book. There's my qualification, just so you know that I am qualified. Qualified barber, real one. <laughs> There's a few old faces in here, boy. Look. Wow. Simon. Yeah, a lot of patterns there. It's Reg really one Ali. About this book. AD. So, so basically, I used to take photos on, on whatever, with what camera I had on Nokia, and uh, go into the computer and I'd print them out. Mate, look how I cut that, it's sick. But this is the stuff that I used to see on Facebook that yeah. I was just so not familiar with, but so mm. intrigued. Like, I remember seeing this, that, that that's Fox, isn't it? No, this is... Um, Who's that? Brainy. Oh, okay. Yeah, Brain. Brainy. I Brainy. remember seeing this and just being like, how the hell is this geezer yeah, doing yeah, this? Yeah, I've written his name inside the, the, the cubes. Oh, right, yeah, bloody hell. Adam Veli. Veli, yeah. Mad. I guess this is when I really started getting into to hair, or barbering, so to speak. It was literally, that was, wow. That's quite a lot. Oh, there, I have another book. Yeah. This was the pattern book. That was the pattern, was the pattern book. Pattern book. Can yeah, I can, yeah. That's right here. Loads of books. Yeah, this is it. This is the kind of, this is, is this is what we were talking about earlier. The, Front fades, long sideburns, mullet. I mean, looks kind of mental looking back at it, but this is what was popping off. Mm. Front fade, yeah, mullet. Front fade mullet, yeah. Yeah, front fade mullet. Remember him? That's ben Shaw. Ben Shaw so and his brother. Ross Court. 2000. Georgia. 2008, 9, 10. Yeah, a lot of them. Sick though, this is kind of got a hob feeling about that. Yeah. Giorgio, sick, sick low fade. I remember you telling me a story about how you had to figure yeah. out how to do a low yeah, fade because yeah, yeah. he wanted low fade, you weren't yeah. sure how to do it. Do you remember that? Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah, the burst yeah. fades. Burst. That's what the, the burst here. Two lines, Ross Court. Is that Libya? No, it's not, that's Libya. Libya, sorry, not wow. Ross Court. Wait, 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 wait. That's got to go to Leds. him. That's got to go to him. That's got to go to him. It was when I was working at Men at Work in the... Uh, yeah, Quadrant, yeah. Was it Men at Work? Boys to Men. Boys to Men. Boys to Men, yeah. Yeah, this stuff. This is the stuff I remember. Mm. Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. So last time you remember seeing... This is my client, Max Evans. He's been a client of mine for a long time, but obviously Josh was trimming him before. And I remember 
really seeing this collection. This is your client now as well? My client, yeah, yeah Carl. Um, Interesting. And being pretty impressed, to be fair. Benny. Sick. Yeah. This was like just our time, yeah. isn't it? When we yeah. Yeah, that was the... Uh, yeah, we used that for some of our first... Um, yeah. Some of our first uh, leaflets and stuff, branding for Men's Fire, we mm. used this. Ethan. Ethan, yeah. He ended up doing some graphic design work for us as well, this gentleman. Yeah. But this was an image that we used for the opening day. We had this on a couple of uh, leaflets and things like that, discount leaflets. Mm -hmm. I used to have a table here and I used to have a whiteboard. And eventually when we, we got the brand name, put Men's Fire on there with a Twitter sign. And we had, I had our products that we pre-invested into before the salon. And um, so we were selling our products. Um, I would have my tools on a table over here, so my tools would be on a, a little table here, and I'd just have a barber chair. And then sometimes there'd be a trailer in here, and there would literally be a chair here and the barber chair there. So it was it was quite intense, really. You know, if you was waiting for your haircut, you kind of had to turn that way, and there wasn't really much going on your phones at that time, so you kind of just you had to chat. Mm. You know what I mean? There wasn't like as much entertainment or whatever else distraction on your phone there is there now. Um, so that was it really. It was, uh, you know, unless unless the trailer wasn't in here, then people would space themselves out a little bit. But um, the roof would leak a little bit every now and then, but uh, I kind of used that in my water bottle, you know, and just, <laughs> just, just kept top, topping it up. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, this was the uh, the origin, the origin of many, many haircuts used to come in here per week. I'm talking like 80, 90 people, man. This, this it was crazy. I'm pretty sure that the neighbours probably thought there was a lot of drug dealing going on, but a little shady garage why people come in over here for a little, little haircut. Doesn't kind of make sense, but made a lot of sense at the time. 20 years ago, pop, pop, pop. How much money do you reckon you made from here, mate? Whoa, you don't want to disclose that on camera, do you? I might. Yeah, 20 quid a trim. You do the math. How many trims a week? Poor, oh, too many. Too many. Too many, man. 70, 80, sometimes 90, seven days a week, immersed. But, um, yeah, it all led to the path that, that we're on now. No regrets. First started off uh, barbering just by cutting my friends' hair, um, just at, you know, at home, putting tram lines in their hair. Um, really, really became a hobby for me, um, and slowly grew into a passion. In my grandmother's garage, I'm charging 20 pounds. Like there's, there's like rain dropping from the floor. I had this one tube light. I didn't even have a mirror on the wall, and I was charging 20 pounds. But it was because the haircut was of a certain standard. I've been a hairdresser for about 10 years. Um, used to work in the hairdressing industry, cutting a lot of females' hair. Um, got very bored of it, I lost a lot of interest. Um, had a big passion for cutting and styling men's hair. Um, after working for a few big London companies, I realised that hairdressing wasn't for me and um, cutting men's hair and barbering was. So um, left uh, the company I was working for and uh, started talking to Josh and we started creating this brand, Men's Fire. And um, a few years later, here we are. Sam, my business partner now, Samuel Palmer, we went to the same school together, but we weren't necessarily friends. We had different social circles. I was more in the sporty group. He was more in the naughty group. And what we did realize at the end when we were both leaving school is that we were interested in hair because we kind of almost had the same hairstyle. So we sort of, we started to connect on a social level, then we become friends, we started going out together. And we started pulling ideas and we sort of said to ourselves, not jokingly, but also like futuristically said, you know, well, let's, we'll open a salon one day, like a men's grooming parlor type of bespoke type place. Well, we just wanted to say, listen guys, well done. Um, congratulations on your tenure. Uh, we know how hard it is to 
uh, be successful and be consistent for that long period of time. Well done to all of you. Um, I think you're all doing a great job. Uh, I love the togetherness that you all have as a team. Uh, companies go through ups and downs and changes, and I think you guys have evolved really well. Uh, I love what you guys are doing. Um, I think you're all good human beings. Uh, proud of you all. Uh, congratulations. I just want to do a little message to say a massive, massive congratulations to Josh and Sam on the amazing achievement of Men's Fire. What can I say? Global domination, worldwide education. Josh, Sam, honestly, you, for me, you have single-handedly changed uh, the barbering world. Um, I look at other people's social media and all I see is the influence of Menspire and what you guys have created. Your education is second to none. Your passion, your knowledge is just being pushed around the world. So long may it continue and I look forward to watching the further success for the next 10 and 20 years of Menspire. Happy anniversary to Menspire. I say congratulations to the team the amazing work they've been doing and how they've changed the industry of the barbering world. And I also wanted to mention how I'm very proud to be friends and work closely over the years with Josh and Monica, someone I admire and somebody who's been a big support for me in the industry. So guys, happy anniversary. So Menspire has not only inspired other men, but got to the hearts of those barbers all over the world. And their mission, you know, has penetrated not the market, but their hearts. And that's very important because when you create that connection with the artist, with that barber that wants to climb up and like do better every day, when you reach and inspire and motivate uh, those people, that's when we, you really, like, your legacy keeps living forever. And I think that's what Josh LaMonica has done with Menspire. Hey guys, Sunday morning here and it is the 10 year anniversary of Menspire. A huge congratulations to both Josh LaMonica and Samuel Palmer. Guys, it's been a truly amazing journey to witness what you guys have built over the 10 years. I wish you all the luck for the future and I am super happy to be a part of it. Hi Sam and all at Menspire. Congratulations on such an achievement, 10 years. Wow, it's been amazing watching all of your journey and really your success globally. So proud some of you and I look back to those days when we worked together. You were always so inspiring, so creative and always that boy with the cheekiness. So well done to all of you. Enjoy your success and I continue to watch you globally. Well done to all. Hey guys, Jake Unger here from the Hob Academy. I just wanted to wish everybody at Menspire a huge congratulations for 10 years in business. What an amazing milestone for your 10 year anniversary. A massive shout to Josh, Ollie and Sean, having previously worked with you. Um, it's incredible to see where you're taking this industry um, and keep shouting about UK barbering is amazing. Um, keep smashing it boys um, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Guys let me just say a massive congratulations and a massive thank you for your 10 years of hard work and pure inspiration and motivation into your craft, into what you've done to this industry. You really really have created something so unique, so dynamic and I'm very, very proud to call you guys my friends. I think that I wouldn't be exactly where I am right now if I hadn't been watching you guys, taking things from you and being motivated by what you do. And uh, I love you all. Hi guys, this is Jorge X from Expression and Quantum Hair. And I'm here in the studio in Madrid and I just wanted to send a true message and really honest uh, message to everyone behind Menspire and to my dear friend Josh Lamonaca uh, to celebrate your 10th anniversary. Congratulations for that. You are changing the barber industry. Hi everybody, this is Richard from Seiko and I just wanted to wish you all a huge congratulations on 10 incredible years. Josh, thanks for being such an inspiration to all our industry. And, uh, and well done to you all on what you've achieved so far. Here's to 10 years more. Congratulations. Congratulations on 10 years of Menspire. Congratulations, Josh. Congratulations, Sam. 
Samuel, I remember when you first started at Sandritz, working first of all as an assistant, very polite, very quiet, but really conscientious of the work that you were doing. Always a pleasure to be with. I remember one competition you did for the young artistic team and you did this gents haircut only with scissor and clipper work, which at the time in San Ritz, we weren't allowed to use clippers, but you really had that elegance in your work. And it's amazing to see how you've grown this amazing company, Menspire, together with Josh, to be a complete global brand. Super proud of you both. Really well done. And congratulations on 10 years. Here's to 10 more. See you. There's going to be new, new aspects of Menspa that are going to come through this year, and uh, very exciting. There's loads, loads more to do. We've only just kind of scratched, scratched the surface, really. We've got lots of shops, but there's, there's lots of work to do. It's interesting. I mean, we both play very different roles, uh, and there's been different times along the journey when we both had to, I suppose, step up a, a bit more. I knew what Josh wanted out of this. Josh knew what I wanted out of this. And we've had, you know, conversations along the way, not many, about, you know, I've just said, you know, at, particularly at the beginning when I feel like Josh's input was maybe greater than mine, and there's times when I thought, oh God, I need to, I need to show up and provide a bit more value here. And thankfully, I was able to do that when, you know, we started expanding, opening new businesses together. And I said to Josh, look, you focus on what you need to do. You travel, do whatever you want, and, and leave the rest to me. that we've, we've gained from going through the, some of the mistakes and stuff that we've made, you know, allows us now to move the way we do with real true power. 10 years in, I'm personally absolutely thrilled and, and mind blown where we are, but we're still very much getting going. Because like yeah. I said, we've, we've learned what we need to learn and we just, yeah, we've, we've, we're ready for the future. to the garage. Who's next? <laughs>